Next. <laughs> next, please. Next, 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 next. We have to watch this. So um, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Tremaine Emery, um, the founder of Denim Tears. You know, I um, love that guy. And that whole fucking period with Supreme was one of the most entertaining and fun things to witness from afar when he got into a tit-tat with Supreme and basically declared that they were um, white supremacist company because they wouldn't allow him to put some depiction of somebody getting a slave getting whipped or something on a t-shirt and that they weren't empowering black voices and that the c-suite were full of white people even though the whole company is like a amalgamation of fucking races from the store to the vision net for the visions for the to the visuals that they put out there um the c-suite wasn't reflective of that and he basically accused you know james jebby of basically being hitler right pretty crazy accusations to throw out there which is even funnier because people number one weren't happy when he got the job right so thinking oh he didn't deserve to get the job he was underqualified what does he know about supreme he gets a job which is a really surprising hire it's a really kind of clever hire a smart one for supreme's sake because they're hiring somebody that's a bit un what's it underground but it's a bit under the radar they're giving a chance to somebody that's just getting started who's kind of making a name for themselves maybe he can you know have a different kind of point of view a different sort of vision that he can kind of sprinkle across supreme and shit and obviously with the connection he has to new york and people associate with the brand it kind of made sense but it didn't work out cool he's now gone full steam ahead with denim tears it's more successful than ever he's selling more cotton reef you know bits of clothing that he could probably um you know get his head around making millions and millions of dollars off the back of it and now there's this even more of a sicker collaboration that he's got where he's linking up with mark jacobs um mark jacobs is doing some sort of special collaboration thing project where they're linking up with a lot of like people associated with the brand loads of family and friends and he's now a part of this collaboration that's going to be you know propping up i think it's the 20th anniversary i think to celebrate 20th anniversary i think of mark jacobs so he's a part of the whole thing but there's a video i want to share with you that's fucking incredibly funny so this is a caption that he posts on his instagram um and a picture of him in front of the the billboard sorry the the advertising a poster here that features a lot of the collaborators involved in mark jacobs project including mark jacobs himself here at the end and i think future and a few other people and um what you call it um the i forgot the artist's name here on the side there but let's read the caption itself because i think the caption is funny and then we're going to see the video that i think is even funnier the caption from dead in tears or tremaine emery sorry it says as follows i started working at mark jacobs in the stockroom in 2006 at the mark my mark store on bleaker street worked for the company for nine years ending my tenure as manager at the london collection store in mayfair the funny thing about denim the funny thing about tremaine i'll keep calling denim tears the funny thing about tremaine is that if you've read enough of his interviews if you're familiar with him you'll know that he repeats this mark jacobs story ad nauseum I, there was a period in my life where I felt like I kept mentioning 1948 too much. I don't even think I mentioned the fact that I worked in a Nike store 1948 for like, you know, nearly 10 years or however long it was. I don't even mention as much as he does. But he repeats this story so much. But I think that is also a good thing. You have to kind of have a little bit of a narrative, a story, a theme about your fucking journey. You need to repeat a certain thing. Hey, I was fucking... Um, an intern for this person um my first placement was here um i i grew up with that person like you need to you need a little story a little narrative right you need something to kind of you know tell your fucking um fiction to put it out there and i think this is part of his the mark jacob story i was in the stock room then i went up didn't mention that's my that was my way in fashion it's a story that he repeats ad nauseum but regardless let's continue that's how I started in fashion. In the stockroom, I just like Mark did, uh, um, whatever that thing is, many years before me, I never, in, I never felt entitled to anything. I just figured if I worked hard and treated people good, kept learning, um, stayed alive and was lucky enough, something could happen. I'm very grateful to be one of the 13 collaborators for Mark Jacobs. Oh, it's a 40th anniversary. Fucking hell. 40th year long as celebration for one of the greatest designers and coolest cultural figures of our time. Jesus, Mark Jacobs has been around for 40 years. Fucking incredible. So big up to Mark Jacobs in that regard, right? An incredible story. I think it's very inspiring too, especially people who are in the fashion industry. Um, I think it's a rare one because I think most people, myself included, who have worked in fashion, who have worked in streetwear, who have worked with clothes and who worked retail, 
it doesn't end like this. You don't go from working retail, suddenly being a cool guy to then having your own brand and all that sort of shit. It doesn't usually end that way. It just ends with you just never getting a job and just having to figure something else out. It's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that whole fucking retail, it's an illusion. It's a fucking fantasy. It's a dream that they kind of trick people, especially young kids coming from uni. Oh, work at the St. Laurent store, work at the Balenciaga store. You might, and nah, nothing happens. If anything, it's more important what you do outside of your job. Maybe you can leverage the job to kind of help the stuff you're doing, but you have to do your own projects, have your own magazine, start your own modeling agency, have your own brand, but you can't rely on working somewhere to get you to look like, especially retail, because it's so disconnected to the brand itself. Like there's nothing connecting Luwebe the store to Luwebe the, the fucking design studio. You know what I mean? You're, no, you're nowhere near to being, you know, Jonathan Anderson's design fucking assistant because you work part-time at Luwebe. It's not going to happen. You have to actively do things to get closer to Jonathan Anderson and to make it known that you're, you know, want that job, but just working and stocking shelves in Luebe store isn't going to actually help you get that job. So the whole retail fantasy thing is a fantasy. Um, but obviously he's one of the people that kind of was able to kind of break through and do his thing. Cool. No problem with that one. The funny thing that I liked about this was there's this video that he posts on his Instagram that is probably one of the most cringiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like muy, 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 muy cringy, right? I don't think I've ever seen in my entire life something more cringy than what I'm about to show you right now. It's something that really did make me laugh. Let me just get up for you right now if I can see it. Because I think to myself like, why, what are you doing? Do you think you look cool doing this? And obviously somebody in the background was thinking the same thing that I thought because they said in the background, some woman, I think, is like, that's so gay. <laughs> you can hear them. So here's a video. This is the video from, uh, I think his social media feed, right? And it features Tremaine spray painting the billboard that features him on there and putting the um, cactus plant flea market smiley face with the free eyes on it, on the thing. Because I think cactus plant is also part of this collaboration. She might be this... um this Asian woman there because I think Cactus Plant Flea Market is an Asian lady, right? So it might be that lady there next to him. Who knows? But he he spray painted the face on. Listen to the listen to the person in the background walking by. hear the person that's so gay one more time <laughs> and they're completely right that's so gay <laughs> that's so gay exactly it really is gay but i think that's part of being successful in this field you have to kind of be a little bit gay you have to be a little bit corny you have to be a little bit lame you have to be a little bit self-absorbed you have to be a little bit maniacal you have to be a little bit narcissistic. You have to be a little bit sociopathic. You have to be a little bit of those things to really advance anywhere, to really believe that you're the shit. Like, because he actually, this guy's walking around like he's fucking Basquiat doing this shit. He really does think he's doing something by spraying this little fucking smiley face on this fucking Mark Jacobs poster out here in the New York streets. He really does think he's fucking J.A. up here. Man thinks he's fucking 10 foot. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he really think he's fucking all city, like spraying this fucking dumb smiley face on here. It's really fucking hilarious. Like he really does think he's doing something. And it's even lamer. I think it'd be one thing if he just did it himself. The fact that he hired a guy with a camera to pan around and film him as he's fucking doing this cringy smiley face thing is even worse, right? What's that footage for? A documentary? Is that going to be on his Instagram somewhere too? Like, where's that footage going? This cringy fucking SLR picture thing where he's panning. It's like, come on, man. Come on, bro. Get a life. Get a life. But hey, um, congratulations to Denim Tears regardless or to Tremaine, sorry, and Denim Tears, I'm assuming. Um... So let's see what that collaboration happens and what happens with that going forward. Um, big up Mark Jacobs also. 40 years in the industry is fucking no joke. Um, you know, I always loved Mark Jacobs when I was growing up. Um, always a brand I kind of looked at and looked at for in the past, Mark by Mark especially. I remember when I was first kind of having thoughts of having my own brand, 
I was always inspired by the idea of Mark by Mark Jacob, just the name alone. I always kind of had this fanciful idea that I'd have like an Agostino, Agostino fucking brand. And the idea of it would be to kind of reverse how people launch brands instead of launching it based on ready to wear it'll be just accessories and then it'll go into ready to wear so you'd start off by making like hats belts bags you know whatever else it may be and then you'd go into making like ready to wear stuff which is you know kind of the inverse of what people usually do but in general um mark by mark now is having a bit of a resurgence a bit of a kind of reawakening um, i saw the campaign with louis Ver and i think fk twigs and shit that was pretty cool so clearly it's coming back into the zeitgeist and shit so i'm eager to see what they do going forward with his collaborations and who they collaborate with going forward but yeah absolutely hilarious um situation um tremaine out here literally thinking he's fucking banksy um thinking he's john <laughs> shot me shot basket and shit thinking he's doing something special with this stuff but the collaboration should be interesting though i'm not gonna lie um a lot of people collaborating here there's a full post i think courtesy of mark jacobs um which got instagram account you've got here so sophia coppolo um the director you've got pharrell you've got um cactus plant you've got murakami you've got futura you've got alison mckin oh is that alison mckin the stylist is that what he looks like is it i didn't know that i literally have never seen a picture of alison mckin in my entire life i didn't know that's what he looks like fair play yeah as the mckin the legendary stylist that's where he is that's a fucking serious outfit in it the bomber jacket under the hoodie with the cargoes and the <clears throat> what you call it and the mark jacobs platforms right <clears throat> which he's fucking famous for really cool and you got futura there you got tremaine from denim tears there and who else who's you got here you got anna Su okay that's anna sue sorry that's not cactus plant you got anna sue and then you've got the duo from uh Vicera as well there as well so interesting brand of people he's collaborating with mostly looks like it's a friends thing i'm assuming because a lot of these people have that he's probably got too many friends with brands mark jacobs in it so maybe a lot of them can't work with him because of the contractual obligations right but there's a lot of people here that aren't featured on the actual picture there's a pat mcgrath on the tag We've got Nigo also is going to be collaborating on here. We've got, um, I don't know who this is, 100, 100, 1, 800 New Bold. I don't know who that is, but they're collaborating with them. Um, we've also got Heaven. There's, all, there's going to be Heaven collaboration, which makes sense. And then what else have we got here? That's it, right? Yeah. What is the 100? I don't know what that 1, 8, 1 800 New Bold is. What is that? It sounds familiar. What is 100, 800 New Bold? I have no idea it's called someone called nick newbold i don't know who nick newbold is but they're also collaborating with um mark jacobs going forward but yeah big up tremaine big up denim tears can't wait to see what they put out can't wait to see what they put out